everyone, it is Nicole here today for Ellen Hudson with a new pattern to the People Project featuring the Little Gentleman stamp set, part of the latest Essentials by Ellen release from Ellen Hudson for March 2019. We're even going to use a, another new image from the Backyard Bird Friends stamp set, and we're going to use some past or previously released stamps from the Essentials by Ellen line for our Pattern to the People background builder. I am using a ruler and a pencil to kind of draw in a shape to build a room for my card. I'm building the background scene for my cute little gentleman, little boy image. Kind of like a little fun bedroom scene is what I'm going for. We are going to use the awesome plaid maker stamp set to build the bedroom floor and the bedroom wall. And then we're going to use pattern play to add a stripe texture to the boy's shirt. And then there's a like a little crisscross, a little X design. We're going to use that to decorate a table lamp for his room. So lots of pattern going on here today. Let's start with our awesome plaid maker stamp set here. And I want to mask off the walls so we can add this really fun plaid texture floor. I'm going to use a little post-it tape to mask that off. And then we're going to be stamping the plaid maker all over the floor with Lawn Fawn Black Licorice and Hippo inks. So kind of a black on black or black on gray texture for the floor. I went super neutral with my floor and wall so that we could have lots of color with our little gentleman and all of the cute accessories. And then of course out the window, we're really building this entire scene here. My favorite thing to do with any of the leading lady line from the Essentials by Ellen is to create background scenes for all of these adorable images. So we're simply going to build this plaid background. This is an amazing plaid builder stamp set. If you love plaid like I do, there's lots of ways to use this. So we're using it really simply today, just kind of keep moving it, keep filling in every other. I am using the Misty Stamp Positioner so that I am able to perfectly line up and stamp these multiple times, one on top of another, to get that really crisp stamped image, which is really important to me with these solid images like this. And that way, if there's ever any faint areas or anything like that, I can stamp it again. My masks are protecting the walls because we're going to draw in a baseboard. We're going to, and then stamp a, a wallpaper design is what I'm calling it for the walls with the little stripe here from the plaid maker stamp set. So lots and lots of stamping going on in the background as well as lots of coloring. Using a pattern type of stamp set makes creating this super easy. You don't actually have to draw in anything yourself, although you definitely could if you wanted to. So we're almost done adding our black licorice pattern. Then we're going to take one of the stripe patterns from Plaid Maker and fill in that every other with a light or a kind of medium gray ink is what I'm going to call it. This is the Lawn Fawn Hippo ink. And you're going to see it's just going to fill in really nicely. You also could have used the black ink here, but I was afraid it might be just a little too dark. And I wanted to have some of those lighter areas on the carpet or the floor here. So we'll finish filling this all in. And then we can start drawing in our baseboards, mask that off, and then stamp the walls for this cute little scene. 
and I'm just making sure to clean my stamp between moving it so that I don't accidentally smudge anything. I'm using a microfiber cloth and a little stamp cleaner to clean that off after each impression. Looks like we have one more and then I'm going to remove the masks which have protected the walls and we're going to use our ruler and our pencil to draw in a baseboard. This really helps just build that whole feeling of this being a bedroom or a room in a house or whatever you want to call it for your little scene. It doesn't look like much, I don't think, until you um, start coloring in the rest of it or adding the rest of it. I like to use a pencil because this allows me, if anything's wrong, I can adjust. I wasn't totally happy with my lines. I didn't think they were super straight. So I can kind of fix that, alter it if I need to. I want to make sure that I have it exactly the way I want it before I commit to tracing these pencil lines then with a Copic multi-liner pen. And the reason I'm using a Copic multi-liner multi pen is I'm going to color in the baseboard with Copic markers and some other kinds of markers might bleed or uh, smear. So I want to use something that works with Copic so that I can color that in and it has that beautiful crisp image. So here is our baseboard. And I'm going to take my multi-liner now and I'm going to trace those pencil lines once I'm happy with them. And I'm even going to do a line there next to the carpet to finish it off and give it a really nice crisp line. If there's any pencil lines left over, I can take my eraser and just kind of gently get rid of those and I'm left with my little bedroom corner. I'm gonna take then the solid line image from Pattern Play, or Pattern Maker, pardon me, with some Manatee ink from Lawn Fawn, and we are just going to stamp a design. I used my Post-it tape again to mask off the baseboard and the carpeted floor. And I found it easiest to use an acrylic block instead of the stamp positioner. I did not want to move a stamp positioner this many times or move my paper. So I am using my acrylic block and eyeballing it. You could also kind of use the lines on a work surface. I'm using the Tim Holtz glass mat here. You could really kind of maybe do about a quarter of an inch and use it that way. There is our nice little light gray wallpaper stripe. Let's lift up our post-it tape and color in our baseboard. I really start all of my scenes by building the background first and then moving to the images. I did lay out most of the stamps I was going to use prior to building my background scene so I had a good idea of where everything was going to go before I actually got started. It's always a good idea with any of the leading lady line, any of the people, to kind of have an idea, maybe lay them out so you know exactly where they're going to go and before you actually draw it in, color it in, stamp it in, whatever it might be. We will be adding a window to this wall, which I really think helps give it that room illusion and it gives you a little peek to the outdoors. I'm using some shades of brown Copic markers to color in my baseboard. This is a nice little contrast to the grays and blacks we used for the flooring and the wall. This is E55, 57, and 49. The window frame was die cut using the winter window die and I die cut the frame and the outline from smooth white cardstock and I'm coloring them in with the same colors of Copic markers that we used for the baseboard. Then I used just the inside area to die cut 
the uh, window frame from the wall. So I'll show you that here in just a second. We're gonna keep blending this window until we get the colors the way I want them to look and to have it kind of match up with the baseboard on the wall. You wanna make sure you keep your work surface clean if you're coloring with Copic markers onto like a glass surface like I'm doing and then you're col you color something else lighter because some of that color could get picked up and transferred to your project. Once I know where the window's going to go or I have an idea, I'm gonna take that inside piece there like I was just talking. We're gonna temporarily hold that in place with some post-it tape and then run that through the die cutting machine. It's gonna cut off part of the window, but we're just seeing a peek. This is just like a little snapshot picture of this little boy in his room. Back behind the window, we're gonna layer another piece of cardstock. And on this one, we wanna give the illusion of an outdoor scene. And I want a blue sky with a tree branch showing. I'm gonna take one of these life-changing blender brushes and a little fish tank lawn fawn ink with the My Favorite Things Mini Cloud Edges stencil and stencil in a cloud background. What I love is these brushes stencil regular dye inks beautifully. So any ink color you have, you can grab that and create some beautiful results. So this is gonna, I didn't have to do the whole panel. It's just gonna be a little peek back behind our window. We wanna see these clouds. And of course, we're gonna see this awesome little branch. This is from the new Backyard Bird Friends stamp set. I'm only gonna use the branch. There's also some birds and things, but I opted not to use those today. Let's go ahead and stamp all of our images for our scene now. I am using the branch from Backyard Bird Friends. We are using the stack of books and the lamp from the Leading Ladies Bookworm Lady stamp set. So don't be afraid to mix and match. Grab your past Leading Lady stamp sets and see if there are embellishments and images and things that you can mix and match to really build some fun scenes. And then of course, we're using lots of images from the new Little Gentleman stamp set. We're using the flag, a book, the paper airplane, the frog, the boy of course, a dinosaur, a backpack, and a football. Plus, we're gonna use a sentiment from this to customize our flag after our coloring is all done. I'm coloring in his jacket with red. This is gonna be a big pop of red on the image. I felt like it really needed lots of color since we kept the background scene very neutral with lots of blacks, grays, and browns. So the little hoodie is going to be red, the lampshade is going to be red, and then we'll have a couple pops of red um, on the backpack and on another book. This is our 35, 37, and 39. The skin colors I'm using today are E00, 11, and 13 with a little R20 for the cheeks. We're gonna blend out that color there for his skin tone. The pants are B95, 97, and 99. I think these are great colors for the look of denim. I did a little bit darker denim look. I like to start light and gradually build up that color. I'm even going to darken that just a little bit more, especially along the pockets where the hoodie overlaps the jeans, around the zipper and all of that. Let's take our red markers again and add the red for one of the stacks of books. We're adding some warm grays for a light gray t-shirt with warm gray zero, zero, one, and four. 
We want to get our base color down and then I will be masking off the rest of the image and leaving the t-shirt bare so that we can stamp that with some of the Lawn Fawn Hippo ink and a pattern play. So this pattern play stamp set is fantastic for adding patterns to anything, but I love customizing the clothes. So this is going to give him a little striped t-shirt. I'll remove that mask and check out how cute his little outfit is. Love that. The leaves on the tree are YG21 and 17. The flag is going to be in shades of yellow with yellow 08, 19, and a little yellow red 04. I purposely or colored this first and then I will come back and stamp a sentiment from the Little Gentleman stamp set when I'm all finished. We're going to use some blues here just for the top and the flagpole itself or the little sign itself. We're going to use some greens, yellows, all the colors for this stack of book, books really. So any of the colors you see throughout this video for this little scene, I'm going to be using on this stack of books. I wanted it to be super colorful. So we've got our red color combination, our 35, 37, and 39. Our orange combination is YR04 and 09. Yellow is Y08 and 19. The green combination is YG21, 23, and 17. And then the blue combination is B01 and 04. And that's what I used for the flagpole as well. And then I'm just doing a contrasting color for the spines of the book. Mixing and matching all of these colors. There's also the little individual book image that comes in the Little Gentleman stamp set. As the tree on the cover, we're going to use a lot of these same colors to decorate this book. And I'm going to be sticking this next to his backpack and frog on the floor in his room. Almost like this is the book he pulled out of his backpack to read. The dinosaur is YG 21, 23, and 17. These are just fantastic little boy images. I love them. The airplane, we're going to do some warm gray colors with warm gray 4 and 1. And then we're just going to pull a lot of the same colors we've already used for the backpack. The base, the main color of the backpack is going to be the blue, B01 and 04. The rocket on the backpack has some reds and grays as well as some yellows for the flames coming out the back. And then the pocket is going to be green with YG21, 23, and 17. And then I'm making a plaid design all over the backpack with a white opaque pin, just drawing that back and forth over the blue area on the backpack. For the hair, I'm going to feather in E31, 55, and 57. We just grabbed a little bit lighter shade for the highlight areas on the hair. I feather in with the lightest color first, then the me medium color, and finally just very, very lightly with my darkest, the E57. And then I even went back over that a little bit more with E55. I grabbed another color combination for the frog with G21, 24, and 28. I felt like I needed just a little something different instead of the colors I've used throughout the rest of the design for the leaves and the books and the dinosaur. The lampshade, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to do that in some red. I thought a little red lamp in the black and white room was cute. 
We're going to use, again, our 35, 37, and 39 with a little gray for the lamp stand itself, the warm gray four, and some blue in B04 for the top of the lamp and the lamp pole. Now before I die cut my images, I wanna take a sentiment from the Little Gentleman stamp set and stamp that with Fish Tank ink. Because I'm stamping blue on yellow, it really looks kind of greenish, I think, in the finished uh, flag, which I absolutely don't mind at all. I'm gonna glue my window in place, and then I'm gonna start gluing all of these images down I want to customize the bottom edge of my lamp with this crisscross design from the Pattern Play stamp set. With some Lawn Fawn clear embossing ink, we're going to stamp those crisscrosses, just one line of them along the bottom edge of the lampshade. And then we'll sprinkle on some Lawn Fawn white embossing powder and heat set that. I'm using a dry paintbrush to wipe away any embossing powder that might have migrated to areas I don't want it. There's lots of little pattern touches throughout this background scene card today. So let's start with our stack of books and our lamp here in the corner. And then of course the little boy. And I'm trying to decide what to put in his arms that isn't gonna cover up those awesome stripes we added to his t-shirt. So I opted for the football. I'm gonna glue that down and then glue him down in place. I'm using my acrylic block to hold that down and dry. We're gonna create a little stack with his backpack, book, and then the frog. We're gonna tuck that dinosaur over by the other stack of books. We're gonna glue the flag into his hand and then add the paper airplane flying through the air as well. We've got our tree branch that's hanging outside of his bedroom window that we need to tuck back behind. I'm gonna grab some glue and then just kind of, I just want quite a bit of it to show. So I'm gonna play around with that before the glue dries all the way. And that looks pretty good. And then I want to glue this panel on top of our cloud outside panel. I'm gonna use a nice strong adhesive to glue these two pieces together. Then I'm gonna flip this over and trim off the rest of that window with some scissors. Take a black glaze pin and add detail to the eyes on the little boy, and I think it had a little bit of goop, so I'm just using a little sharp tool to pick that up. So go in and add detail to the eyes, um, the eyes on the frog, the eye on the dinosaur. And then I'm gonna take a white pin and we're gonna add little highlights and detail throughout the entire design. This is a great way to add interest without adding extra bulk to a card. So lots of little highlights throughout everything, adding them to the hair, clothing. We're gonna add some little lines to the spines of the books, almost like there's the titles of the books and things on those. Make sure and add them to the little flag he's holding, the book on the floor, and then our little frog and dinosaur. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this Pattern to the People feature for Ellen Hudson, featuring new stamps and dies for the Essentials by Ellen release for March 2019. Please be sure to visit Ellen Hudson for more information. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.